Hello friends, welcome back to Tech with Veeresh. So in this uh, continuous efforts towards understanding Apache Spark and getting ourselves prepared for Spark interview questions, today we'll discuss one of the very premium uh, Apache Spark performance technique and that is towards understanding the entire memory management model of Apache Spark and how we can tune and leverage that memory model to get the optimum performance from Apache Spark. So, you know, memory contentions are one of the, you know, uh, basic or major reasons why performance uh, pr problems come into any sort of uh, Spark job. And to understand the underlying memory model is very imperative to do any sort of performance tuning related to memory. Uh, if you try to, uh, it will not be wrong if we say that, you know, efficient memory utilization is absolutely super critical for any sort of, uh, you know, optimum performance for any sort of spark job uh, we can't run away from the fact that in any sort of cluster your resource uh, your resources are limited uh, you can al always go and do the horizontal scaling of the entire cluster but in any way which ways you always have limited set of resources and the idea is to get the maximum output from those set of resources and memory uh, happens to be one of the expensive resources out of that so efficient utilization is must. If you try to understand what sort of problems we can get into with memory is obviously there are issues with memory contentions, you know, different tasks, uh, different executors running in parallel or different jobs altogether running in pra parallel, maybe fighting for uh, memory resources. Another thing is whether to cache or not to cache, a million dollar question, right? Uh, whether a caching in a certain scenario gives you the optimization or it staggers the entire uh, Spark shop to go with off heap versus on heap uh, 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 for the memory objects. Then there is a uh, project tungsten to optimize this entire uh, you know memory utilization. Then there can be several other unseen memory challenges, right? Uh, whether the uh, language or the Java objects you're trying to use, they may not be optimized your pointer based data structures are very head heavy takes a lot of huge amount on JVM heap memory and stuff like that so, th so there are numerous problems that we can get into as far as the memory utilization is is uh, concerned so let's try to understand how we can tune the whole process so there are three basic uh, considerations whenever we are talking about you know doing memory management or tuning this memory utilization one is the amount of memory used by your objects Obviously, this determines how much of the space would be gra grabbed on the JVM. And if you'll have your JVM getting filled very quickly, they'll call on your uh, garbage collector cycles very frequently, which will get into a whole sort of performance problems, right? Second one is, what is the cost of accessing those objects? Very important. Your objects may be head heavy and uh, it's, it's very difficult to move those objects over the wire uh, to the data for the execution of tasks. The third one obviously the all-time killer is the garbage collector. Uh, there will be a lot of GC overheads depending on what is the nature of the objects, what kind of partitions and the data distribution do you have in the entire system and what kind of you know data structures have you used to, to kind of contain your uh, uh, different objects that needs to travel over the wire as part of that lambda computation. Okay, so the entire uh, memory model of Spark can largely fall under two categories. Uh, so one is your execution memory. So the entire memory structure now, how it is presented with Spark is it's a unified uh, memory allocation, and that unified uh, memory is kind of uh, dynamically divided into two areas. What we call as execution memory, uh, which utilized for any sort of uh, uh, computations like uh, joins, sorts, any sort of aggregations. And then another segment of that unified memory is storage memory, which is used for storing your cached objects or kind of storing some internal temp data, which needs to go over the wire in the cluster. So let's try to understand. Suppose I'm trying to do some sort of sort on, on a data frame or an RDD with these numbers. And then I call an iterator on top of that and I took some top three values. <coughs> and the nature of the iterator, you know, is, is such that if I try to uh, 
you know this now if a second time I want to take out some uh, top four or top n values I'll have to run this entire compute again probably I will not prefer to do that I'll I'll try to cache uh, the intermediate output of the computation so I'll try to include a cache so this storage which is used for the execution of the sorting is called execution memory and this cache which will store the outcome of this execution is what is categorized as storage memory so I think this picture will clear out what is the exact distinction between the execution memory and storage memory and there is an always a fight between the two a contention I would say between the two memory zones that we need to optimize so if you see there's the unified view of uh, the execution as storage memory and uh, uh, depending on if there is no execution memory storage memory obviously can go ahead and grab all the space same goes for execution memory if there is no storage uh, it can grab all the space however execution memory has got one uh, kind of special power where it can evict the storage uh, if, if it hits some kind of a threshold uh, but it can it can evict uh, storage memory blocks and the algorithm used to kind of evict those uh, blocks is LRU all your least recently used blocks would be removed from the storage and go to spill onto the disk uh, then one important thing is say this is your M which is the entire unified memory representation it is some fraction of the JVM say 0.6 or 60 percent of the JVM or something like that and in that M space there is one R threshold zone which is a fraction of this M maybe say some 50 percent or 60 percent of the M this is the zone where if you have any storage object some cached object this is immune to the eviction so there's one zone which is immune to the eviction and there are certain reasons why this design like that uh, because this design kind of ensures several uh, uh, plus points first obviously is that if you do not have storage memory or execution memory obviously you can grab an, uh, the entire space from both sides storage or execution um, the second fact is come if you have some sort of caching involved in, in your compute in your job right so there is some minimum amount of storage reserved or immune where eviction cannot happen which is very important because if your cache object would be evicted right then you'll have to again read it from the disk there's no point doing caching right and apart from that the whole uh, this unified memory management is kind of you know out of the box dynamically managed by the spark itself out of the box performance it is the user has nothing much to do into it so that's a great plus now the second point is the cost of the objects how much space that object will eventually you know grab onto the JVM which obviously is a very expensive area for us right Java objects are pretty good they're pretty fast you know uh, but the problem with them is they take a comparatively larger amount of uh, uh, you know memory space to be stored for example the simple Java object string will take around 48 bytes I mean like it's a little too much right if you can see the breakups and all of this will come out on a JVM will grab around 48 bytes so one recommended library to be used for uh, lightweight collections and data structures is FastUtil we can try that it's kind of a it's based on more of uh, the primitive data structures and kind of a headless uh, data structures which helps in saving the amount of memory and storage another uh, technique to kind of uh, you know reduce the amount of memory footprints on JVM is you can serialize your object you can use the storage label such as memory only serialize so this what will do it will you know uh, serialize the object will make the object comparatively compact before saving it onto the memory but obviously it brings in that overhead of serialization deserialization but yeah to just be uh, safe on the memory contentions part this could be one of the techniques another killer uh, obviously comes into the picture most of the time is your garbage collector overhead you know your entire job would be quite stopped a world kind of a scenario will come into the picture if your heavy GV cycles GC cycles will run the recommended GC algorithm is the G1 GC 
uh, which kind of concurrently try to uh, work along with the normal Java processes and try to evict or clean the uh, JVM memory storage. Uh, it can probably a good algorithm where situa in a situations where garbage collector cycles are, are pretty lengthy. Another quick point that I want to talk about in terms of whole of these uh, memory contentions is uh, using the right set of uh, you know executor parameters in terms of memory allocation to the particular Spark job, specifically uh, in the cases where you have shared clusters, is very important. I have a separate video how to allocate the executor parameters. Do check that out. But guys, that's it in this particular video. Have a great day ahead and do not forget to like, comment and subscribe to the videos. Guys, it takes a lot of hard work to produce these videos. We need your feedback and support. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye.